Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a real serious talk, so no smiling. No one enjoy themselves, please. Um, but it's actually kind of a whole different concept. You know, here's my usual disclosures. My real disclosure is I put in my 10,000 hours of working construction before, or actually during college and during med school, because my parents sat me down and said, hey, we're not affording private college and forget about med school. And it was interesting, you know, being a carpenter for many years, uh, they taught me many things, like you know, keep your elbows at your side, keep your body behind the drill. You know, if you plunge and hit electricity, you learn pretty quick. Um, but they also taught us to respect your body because if a carpenter injured themselves, they're losing their house, they're losing their apartment, they're losing their family and job. It's a big thing. So the carpenters really know about protecting their bodies, and you know, we've developed a whole bunch of power tools over the years, and it's been interesting. I went to some of the major companies like power around a spine. God, no one will ever do that. That's far too dangerous. And I'd say, well, imagine if you're walking into the neurosurgical room and someone takes a lanky and is stabbing into the skull. That would look pretty insane. You know, the neurosurgeons routinely use power to get into the skull. Brain's kind of important. So I think that, you know, we could be open to using power around the spine. And so we learned from the Scoliosis Research Society when they looked at their surgeons, they found out that they not only had lots of different injuries, but they had 100 times the rate of cervical radiculopathy, the average population. You know, you probably all know some spine surgeon with a problem. I had a cervical radiculopathy and one day I couldn't pick my wrist up, it wasn't too funny. Uh, next morning I was in emergency surgery and it works. And this is in many, many different uh, fields now, but spine seems to be one of the number one. This just came out last year. 67% of spine surgeons reported neck pain in a year. And the scary thing is 17% took off work. And this is in every single subspecialty in ortho that I could find, and I've looked into it. Um, and what's really scary is you look after a few years, there's more than 50% of surgeons taking time off from surgery because they've injured themselves. So we have to start thinking of ourselves as piecemeal laborers. You know, when you're your age, you think that you could you know, do anything, you're not gonna get hurt, but someday, if you're lucky, you'll be my age. And so what we're gonna try to do is figure out ways to protect you and probably protect the patient as well. So what we're gonna do is talk about using power for pedicle cannulation, dilation, and screw insertion, in addition to various things for cutting bone. So let's talk about pedicle screws first. You know, we know the standard starting position at T2 and T12, it's about the center of the transverse process. 789 sure is fine right at the top of the transverse process, and just lateral, to the center point of the facet. That's where we start. Start with a little bit of a burr, and hopefully you see a little bit of a pedicle blush to know you're in the right place. Next thing we use is a two millimeter flexible drill bit. Now, if you take a drill bit and run at full speed, you can go through hardened concrete. But if it goes slow enough that you can see the threads move, you can feel it hit cortical bone, click, 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 or down cancellous bone, ah, it just falls into place. So if you spin it slow enough, you can have more proprioception with a drill bit than you can with a lanky probe. And the drill bit is specially designed to be flexible, so it could bounce off the hard cortical wall and fall into the cancellous bone. I've never broken one of these drill bits or I've never seen one of them broken, people ask that. Next is a three millimeter dull threaded dilator. You know, if this goes a little bit too far, it's not gonna cut a vessel. If it goes a little bit off to the side, it's not gonna cut dura or nerve root. And what it does is basically just dilate the hole, uh, make the hole bigger, and put hard bone around the outside for the pedicle screw threads to hit. Now notice there's no tap. I honestly don't know why taps were the way that we generally learned to put in pedicle screws. I think taps are the most dangerous instrument in spine surgery. They can cut dura, nerve roots, 
I've seen them and heard of them cutting iliac veins, killing people on the table, paralyzing people. Taps are dangerous. I think you have to tap when you're doing an iliac screw, a SAI screw, or else you rip the tulip head off the screw. But aside from that, I virtually never use a tap. As a carpenter, we learned that you don't want to tap soft wood like pine, and cancellous bone is soft. There's no reason to tap it. Next is putting in the pedicle screw. And notice that this is a stab and grab, and there's about 15 degrees of motion between the stab and grab and the screw, and that's intentional. Because once you make the hole, the screw is gonna fall into the hole. And I really don't like how almost all the companies make these extremely rigid things that you screw into the uh, pedicle screw, and then you could only put it in one place, and it's easy to put it in the wrong place. This is a very Taoist-like approach. You have the hole, it's in the right place, you put the ball tip probe there, just let the screw go into the right place. So think of the pedicle as being kind of like a pipe. There's hard outer cortical bone and there's soft cancellous bone in the middle. And the medial, <coughs> medial wall is three times stronger than the lateral wall. So this medial wall was made by God to protect the spinal cord. That's what she told me. And what you want to do when you put the drill bit down, it's okay to bounce off of that. And as long as you're putting in a flexible drill bit, you're not pushing too hard, you're letting it spin slowly, you can feel it bounce off of that wall. And sometimes it goes right in, sometimes it bounces off the wall, either way is okay. And so this is what it looks like in real life. Uh, many times when I didn't know it was happening, somebody in the room was timing things. The pedicle screws are less than 60 seconds a shot. You know, this does not slow you down. I don't use robots when we're doing big cases because wow, would that slow us down. And what about having type D pedicles? If you have a type D pedicle, you know, just like you do with the lanky, go in with the drill bit and you feel hard, 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 soft. So it's about training your hands to feel the different type of bone. And here's where it's easier, becomes a lot more difficult when the robot becomes involved. So I would encourage all of you, do as many open cases as you can, put as many open pedicle screws as you can to train your hands for the proprioception. And you know, people say, well, does, you know, can you really do it with the, the most difficult pedicles? So here's a case that was done out of state you know, with a robot, and the robot said that the pedicles were too small, and so they didn't put any pedicle screws in from T3 to T10. Surprise, it fell apart. So we redid it by hand. I was very proud of my fellow. I think it was her second week of fellowship. She put every single screw in her side by hand open. So this is a very easy technique to learn, to pick up, and it's safe. And I, in fact, feel much safer when a surgeon is gently moving forwards with a drill rather than with a lanky, because you have no idea how hard that lanky's pushing, and it goes, boom, that's a bad day. That's kind of scary. So we work with some engineers, and they came up with ideas I would have never thought of. These little red things are kind of like mini GPSs, and they put the mini GPSs on screwdrivers and on a drill. And what's kind of cool, the red is power. So when you use power, it kind of goes whoo, just like a, a ray beam. But if you're doing it by hand, you can't help but kind of wobble around a bit. And if you think about it, if you're putting in a pedicle screw and you're wobbling a bit, you're probably hurting the bone screw interface. And it turns out that if we look back historically, the screws that we put on by hand we're four times more likely to pop out of place than the ones put in under power. So I think that putting screws in under power, you're more direct, you less wobble, it's a stronger screw. So again, the, uh, this PhD, Amy Kleisen here, is much smarter than me, said, hey, you know, let's look at your, your muscles and surgeon's muscles when you're putting in screws. And they wanted to like look at EMGs in our neck muscles. I'm like, that's crazy. We're not using neck muscles. And of course, you know, she was right and I was wrong. And what we found out is when you do a probe and tap and screw by hand, your neck muscles, trapezius muscles, all of your muscles are going above the danger zone of 20%. So this is like a whole different world. There's this world of occupational medicine. 
And what they've shown is if anybody does anything using 20% maximum force of their muscles over time in a repetitive fashion, you're setting yourself up for injury. And I think that this might be what pushes hospitals and systems to start to buy power, because otherwise doctors could sue and say, you're putting me in a bad or unsafe work environment. And you see here under power, all of the muscle force is below that threshold of 20%. And here we just look at one example of a bicep. Now, look at how big and how long that purple is. And look at how small that blue is. So the light blue is power. And you can see the power is much shorter and much less force. And here, the interesting thing is neck extensors were the, almost the most overused muscle when you look at you know, tapping, screwing, and probing. So somehow when we do things by hand, your neck muscles are working too hard for safety. And if you think about pushing down, what we did, we put a, a force plate underneath a cadaver, had a whole bunch of surgeons put in screws and power a manual, and when they did it, Manual, they went up to 75 pounds of pressure down at some point. You know, they didn't know what we were doing. We were just letting them put in screws. But if you do it on power, you're never going to push that hard because you're afraid of snapping that little thin drill bit. You know, you just don't push hard and use power. And this is a little bit outside of power. Um, but for young surgeons, if you have your elbow up, not only do you have less control and are more likely to plunge, but there's a good chance you're going to ruin your shoulder long term. There's a number of spine surgeons whose careers have been cut short because of shoulder injuries. If you get in the habit of keeping your elbows at your side, you, you will use less force. You'll protect your body more. So I started power pedicle prep to protect me, honestly. You know, I used to do two AIS cases four days a week, so like eight you know, AIS cases you know, a week in the June, and boy, would I get tired. My body would get sore, so I really moved to using power quickly. I now use it to protect my patients. I honestly think it's safer for patients. And at first, I didn't want anyone to know I was doing this because I didn't want anyone to go out and hurt children. Uh, but after a few years of it looking safe, I went out and taught seven uh, key opinion leaders who did lots of deformity, taught them this technique in the lab on cadavers. They went out and did it, and we collected 22,000 screws, and 99.9% .9 of them didn't have any complications or revisions. So when you hear about you know, wow, over 95% of robot screws are great. Yeah, I'd say there's other ways to do it where you could have at least equal, if not more, safety. And so now what we do is any resident or uh, intern or fellow who scrubs in with me to put in the screws, first we do it in the office, you know, with a model. We now have the senior residents teaching the junior residents. It's become a thing. And here's going to be the new thing. So this is the first time I'm allowed to publicly talk about this. It's a high-speed oscillating system. It goes 270 degrees back and forth, something like 10 billion times a second. I don't know how much. And this is a rather dull tip. So it's really hard to push it through cortical bone. Like you have to try to injure the spinal cord, but it cuts through cancellous bone like butter. So we should have this here tomorrow and everybody could use it. I'd appreciate feedback. It's not publicly available yet. I think this is going to be the next jump, not only for open, but even more importantly for robot, because this will return to, you, to us the ability to palpate if you're on cortical versus cancellous bone. OK, let's talk about uh, who here Actually, I'm curious, who in this room has used power to put in a pedicle screw? Just raise your hand. So it's, it's really cool. When I started talking about this 10 years ago, it would be not one hand. Okay, now here's the other thing. Who's used power to make the hole for the pedicle? OK, it's becoming more common. It's kind of cool. 10 years ago, nobody would have raised their hand. And who here uses a bone scalpel? OK, so I consider this the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, CME says I'm not allowed to say that. I have no money involved. I just think it's a fantastic tool. And what it does is vibrates back and forth like 10 billion times a second. It gets hot. You have to make sure you're irrigating it all the time. And it's absolutely wonderful for cutting out inferior facets. It also stops bleeding. You know how you get that awful bleeder right at the lateral edge otherwise? 
and it makes almost perfect, you know, square cuts, no bleeding. It really helps you see to put in the pedicle screws. So if you find you're not putting pedicle screws in too well, there's a good chance you probably haven't dissected too well and you're not seeing well enough. So go back to the basics. And Using a bone scalpel for posterior osteotomies is so good, it's almost cheating. You know, all you do is just cut through the lamina a little bit, cut through the superior uh, facets, put the bone scalpel in there, twist it back and forth. You demonstrate motion between the vertebrae onto the next one. You know, this could be literally like 15 or 20 seconds just to add an osteotomy on. You almost feel guilty billing for it. Okay, next, power kerosin rangeur. I'm curious, who in the room has ever used this? Power Keras and Rangera. Christian has. Okay, this is a fantastic tool. It takes a little bit of a learning curve, but the faster you push it, the more power there is, and you very quickly learn how to use less or more power. If you haven't had the chance to use it, use it. This is fantastic to do osteotomies through previous fusions. Really saves your hands and gives you more control. So in summary, you know, I think that uh, we should mentor young surgeons to preserve their bodies. And it's really just intuitive that if we use less force, that should improve patient safety. There's no reason to ever be pushing hard towards the spinal cord. And the more we can use power with our elbows at our side, I think the better for us and our patients. And this is my family with my daughter in the middle, who's now a ortho resident at Stanford. And she gets really excited putting in like big SAI screws and stuff. Okay, questions, discussion? That's it. Yeah. And I have uh, two residents here in addition to our fellows. The residents grew up, I think, as PGY2 residents, first time with us putting in screws. Would you have any comments what it was like for you guys to learn to put in screws on power versus the other way? Yeah, is a, is a PGY1 and 2 putting in pedicle screws without power at first? Or not? You have to hold the uh, hold it down while you talk. Just, just press as it a, down. As an intern putting, putting in uh, pedicle screws, I remember just my forearms we're dead putting those in and then getting in the OR with you and putting on power. It's the flexible drill bit just like falls into the funnel of the pedicle and made it a lot easier. Um, okay, is this on? Cool. Uh, yeah, I think uh, using the drill bit gives the surgeon a, like really good tactile feedback and being able to use it slowly and watching the rotations helps not only in pedicle screws, but kind of just helps the surgeon in general get better at using their hands with the drill. Yeah. Any other comments, thoughts? Thank you so much, Dr. Skaggs. All right, we're going to switch back to the...